everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this adorable new home card, although it can be any card. You could easily just put happy birthday there and it would look just as good. This is a what I'm calling a centre easel card or a floating easel card because it kind of looks like it's just, yeah, kind of floating, but it's not. It's attached by this little piece here. Really, really easy to make. You can use any stamps, you know, that you have as long as they will cover this section here and it's easy to adapt if you've got something bigger or whatever it is that you know you want to use. You can write your message in here or in this section. You could put a white piece there if you wanted to, but I've actually done mine on the back and I just got there. Happiness is decorating your new home. And I just think it's really, really sweet. This is using the Daisy May Designs stamp set, which I'll show you in a moment. But yeah, really, really quick. The only thing that took the time was the coloring in again, and I'll show you all of that and tell you what I've used. So let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so these are the stamps and dies that I have from the Daisy May collection. So this is the Blue Tip Friend, which is the one that I'm using today. The Daisy May Peony Bloom, you see me use that one, it's a beautiful one. You've got Bloom and Grow and you've also got the Welcome Cottage. I've done cards with those two, I have done with that one with that one, but I'm not sure if I posted it actually. So I will check back on that one, but um, that's really lovely. They're all really pretty and any of these will work and any stamp set will work with this. But um, these ones, I just, yeah, I just think they're just so cute. As I've said before, Daisy May designs are just very, very cute. And this is great when you add the little mason jar because that will kind of cover that middle section. So like I said, all of these would work really nicely, but I am using this one today. So here it is. So I've coloured all of this and I've used my Arteza watercolour pencils. Now the reason I've used watercolour with, and I've not actually used the water is they're just really really creamy and I just wanted to show you that you can use watercolours without just use them as a normal coloured pencil. So if you want to have a pencil that can do both then watercolour pencils can do that. You don't have to add the water. So they're really nice, they're really creamy, you get lovely vibrant colours. You can just see here the lovely um, colours that I've got from these particular ones. So what I'm going to do now is just add in my little video of me colouring these on high speed just so you can see how it all came together and I will list and link the Arteza watercolour pencils below for you. Okay, so like I said, I already went ahead and I coloured them all. I have done lots of the little bird, but I'm not sure if I'm going to use them all, but I just thought I'd colour more. And I've done the little picket fence there. I'm not sure, again, how much I used. You would have noticed that I coloured the star in pink in the video, but I didn't like it. So I went and stamped it again, cut it out, and then stuck it on a little bit of foam. And I like now that yellow, because I think it just is the same yellow that I used on the birds. So everything kind of ties in together. And all of these do come with the corresponding dies. So I just keep mine on the backs of all my stamp sets. This house one is actually really, really cute because you can have the windows actually open um, or you, do, you, know, you don't have to, but the door as well. There's just so many lovely ways to, to use these. So yeah, that is everything there. 
Okay, so I'm going to be using a 5x7 pre-made card base, so this is my 5x7 card here, and what you want to do is pop it in along the 10 inch side, you will already have a score line at 5, if you don't, if you're making this from scratch you want a piece of 10 by 7 and along the 10 inch side you want to score at 5, but if it's pre-made you just want to do another score line at 2.5, okay, so I've already done mine there, and then fold and burnish and you will have that easel. Okay, so that's a straightforward easel card if you just want to keep it like that. So this is my centre five inch score line here, and this is my two and a half. Ignore the two and a half, you don't need to worry about that. This middle line here with a pencil, you just want to come in two and a half inches from both sides. So you can see there, one, two and a half, and just put a pencil mark on that score line. And again, from this side, come in at two and a half and put a pencil mark. Then I always find it easier to use a T squared ruler bring it in so it sits against the very bottom of your card and line it up with that two and a half marker here and just draw a pencil line all the way down. Come along to this one here again, make sure that T-square ruler is right lined up and straight with the bottom there and draw your pencil line. So this is what you will have if I bring it closer. So here I come in two and a half, came in two and a half, marked a little pencil mark and then you just draw in a pencil line all the way down. You're now going to remove all of this here and all of this here, okay? You can cut it with scissors along here and then down if you want and same along here and down. I'm gonna use my cutting knife just because I just know I'm gonna get a nice straight line. Okay, so again, I'm gonna use my grid. Keep that nice and straight and I'm gonna come up this one first. You actually want to remove the score line along the top here, so I'm just going to cut down there first. Okay, and then I'm going to do this one here. Okay, and then along the side here again, keep everything nice and straight. And then I'm actually going to cut up over the score line, so I'm going to remove it. Okay, just means you'll get a nicer finish because you're actually going to see all of this. Okay, so that's now all you're actually going to be left with because that's all I need to connect this little bird box. You see how it's going to look? So it now looks like it's just floating and that's what I loved about having this much, much smaller so it's hidden. This is, and that's why this is great to use with so many stamps that you might already have. You imagine having lots of blooms of flowers around here or something. So yeah, that is, it's so, so simple to do. So next I'm going to bring in this one here which is four and three quarters by five and three quarters. I've done it in green to kind of act like the grass. Okay, and that is gonna go right across the bottom there. Now in terms of writing your message, you can write a message here, or you can write a message on the back, or when that's closed, or when that's like that, you could have a white piece of cardstock in here. I'm probably gonna have my message on the bottom just because you've got lots of room. So I'll do the, the mats and layers to that later. But that's what we're gonna have here. So I'm just gonna grab, actually, before I stick that down, I'm gonna bring in my stopper because I think I might wrap some ribbon or some twine or something around this. So for the moment, what I've done here is I've got this new home. I stamped this myself using some alphabet stamps that I had. I think they were, I showed them a long time ago and I think they're the creative craft sensation, sorry. Yeah, craft sensations, I got them from the range and they were like 99p. So I've just done home in large capitals and then in small capitals I've done new. In fact, this one I've got here. So this is this small one. This is simply created for the small alphabet, which is really handy. The larger one is Craft Sensations. Again, if I can find all the links, I'll link them below for you. But I've got this one here and I've just cut a very small frame in black cardstock just to make it stand out. Now this is gonna go on foam adhesive, but obviously I don't think, I want the stopper to come quite high up and then I don't know if I want that gap there because this is gonna be there. So I think I want a little bit of a white, so I'm going to actually have this on white again. I did think about having it on some coloured card, but I don't know if it's just going to start to clash a little bit. So I'm going to stick with white for the moment. So I'm going to stick this so it's got a bit of a border, like so. I'm going to do this side because I think that's straight. So I'm just going to stick this one down. Okay, so that's now going to go there, and I've got this garden twine, and I think I want to wrap it around a few times, but what I may have to do, because this is quite, it's not too bad actually, it might work, I think I might have to pop that onto some card, so I'm just going to mat this onto a bit of scrap card.
Okay, so I've just made that much stronger now with more of a heavyweight cardstock underneath. And now I'm going to wrap this around a few times and then kind of tie off. And the reason I've put that on card as well is because I'm not sticking it directly onto this. I want to put some foam adhesive on it. If you put foam adhesive on paper, it's more than likely going to dip. So it's better if you do have a cardstock. So I'm going to have that like that and then the plan is that that is going to kind of go off to the side there. This is all going to go on some foam adhesive, that's going to be on foam to stop that moving. And then we can start building up the house and the picket fence and the birds and it should all tie together very nicely. So what I'm going to do first of all is just trim this all a little bit. Okay, so I've got that where I want it. I'm just going to flick this over and then I'm going to run foam adhesive. I'm not going to actually put anything over the twine because that's already quite raised. So it will end up making it all bulky. So, And it will be attached on the other side once I stick this little stopper over it anyway. So it's not going to move. So I'm just going to stick this one down. Okay, and then I'm going to pop some foam on this. Okay, so now this bit's a bit kind of bouncy, so I'm just going to burnish a little bit there. There we go, and it slots in perfectly. So now that is going to stick on there, and then we're going to start layering up the picket fence. It's going to look really cute. I, yes, it is. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pop glue just on this front half here. Okay, so whatever it is that you're sticking down, I would pop it like that in front of you so you can get this lined up and you want whatever it is to be nice and flush with the bottom. There we go, and bring that up, you can see how it's starting to look. How nice does that look? It, all, it does, it just looks like it's floating all by itself. It's such a lovely, I might actually call it floating easel card it does I think it looks quite cool right then with the picket fence because they're all separate pieces what I've gone and done is I've cut these little strips here of white cardstock so I'm gonna have three on each side and I'm gonna just have them together like this so I'm gonna flip these over and I'm gonna run a bead of glue in fact, I want to make sure that yellow one is hidden because you would see the back of that a little bit because when you turn this around, all you're going to see is white. So again, it'll look pleasing to the eye if anybody does decide to inspect it further. As I always say, I doubt people are really going to do that, but if they do. So I'm just going to put that yellow one towards the left there so it can go over the house. So I'm just making sure they're nice and straight with my board there. And then I'm just going to run some glue like that and then just stick this strip across the three of them and then that way it will then form like one piece rather than three separate and it'll make it a bit easier to manage so again just going to pop that there we'll trim off the ends in a moment but now see it looks like one fence and you could do that completely long but I want to have three on one side and three on the other so again I'm just going to do the same with this one Okay, and now they're going to stick just that one on each side to the little birdhouse itself. So I actually only really need to put glue, I'll pop a little bit on there, but it's only really going to stick to the pieces that we just stuck down those strips. So I'm just going to pop that one there. Again, make sure it runs nice and flush. So kind of push it down onto that stopper and that will keep everything together. Okay, so you can see how that looks there and then when you flip it over it's all nice and white on the back so because I didn't use alcohol markers yeah take that into account if you use alcohol markers it may well bleed through so but if you're using you know pencils like I am it will be fine and now I need to just add my lovely little blue tits here so I'm going to have one actually on the picket fence I want to have one down here and you should have odd numbers really so I need a third but I don't know whether I have him there. That looks quite cute. I know really I should have one there, but I really want you to see all of that. Or I could have. Maybe you could go, he might not go in the envelope, but he looks cool right up on the star there actually. 
maybe I'll do that. So always work in three, so I'm going to keep those two for another project, so I'll pop them in. Anything like that, I always pop in the sleeve as well of the stamp steps, of the stamp, stamp or die set that I have, because then you remember you've got them. So I have got a like a miscellaneous box with loads of die cuts, but things like this that you've spent time, you know, colouring and stuff, put them with what it, where it came from because, yeah, then you'll remember to use them. So this one is going to just go on the top of that one there. And I'm going to stick these other two down. Okay, and then I've just done this piece on the back. So this is four and three quarters by six and three quarters. This is where I'm going to stamp my little um, message and or stamp my sentiments sorry, and write my message. This is five by three and a quarter. It can be any size you want. It was actually a piece of scrap, so that's why I've used it. This here I thought was really nice. This is from the Delightful Decorating for the Love Stamp stamp set, this one here. And the sentiment it's got here is happiness is decorating your new home. So I thought that'd be lovely to have in there. So again, these were those bargain stamp sets that I've got. So I will link those below because I'm sure you'll be able to still get it somewhere. So I'm gonna make sure I get this, stick my head in the way. Okay. Make sure you've got a soft, I've got a little foam mat underneath here just to make sure you get that all. Oh no. Yeah, I can get away with that. It's gone a little bit light in the middle. See, it's the thing. I think, oh, I won't get my stamping platform out, but I've just got away with it. I'm not going to go over it. If you go over it, you end up messing it up. I could go over it with another piece of white, but I don't think it needs to. It's a homemade card, so I'm just going to stick that now onto the back of this. Okay, and what you would have just seen me do there is I've just gone over it just slightly with a fine liner pen, so now you wouldn't even know. So there's the back, and then look at that adorable new home card. I absolutely love this. You could put, in fact, I might even put a little gem on there. You could, I've got a little heart, and because that's not, not been like stuck down, that bow, I could, um, yeah, you'll see it in the photos. I've got a lovely little heart charm, which I think will work very well with that and it's like in the shape of a house with a heart in the middle so I think that'll just add a nice little bit of decoration but yeah there you have it so this is kind of like a floating easel card I think it looks fantastic I hope you like it hope you like my coloring using the colored pencils there and as always everything will be linked below so yeah hope you're enjoying the series and getting lots of inspiration and learning lots of new things get your coloring pencils out get your stamps out and start creating some lovely cards so yeah, thank you for watching everybody. Please hit the thumbs up if you did enjoy today and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching, bye.